Hey guys, welcome to another video from Foolish Engineer. This time we'll check out how a full bridge converter works by understanding its waveforms, its advantages, disadvantages, and where do we use this converter. So let's go for a ride. A full bridge converter has four MOSFETs a high frequency transformer, two short key diodes, an inductor, and an output capacitor. In the primary side, these four MOSFETs are connected in H chip, and the secondary side is connected like this. These both primary and secondary sides are electrically isolated from each other with the help of a transformer. The primary side of a full bridge converter is connected to the input and secondary side is connected to the electrical load which we have to provide the power. The pulse width modulation signals are provided to these MOSFETs which switch the MOSFETs on and off and that's how we control the direction of the current flowing through the circuit and we get the regulated output power at the secondary side. Here we have to provide a DC power supply at the input. Let's understand the working of this converter with waveforms. We'll understand the working of this full bridge converter in two parts. In the first cycle, the MOSFET Q1 and Q4 are turned on and MOSFET Q2 and Q3 are kept off. In the second cycle, the MOSFET Q1 and Q4 are turned off and MOSFET Q2 and Q3 are turned on. So these MOSFETs create bridge-like circuit and they switch alternately. Well, this switching cycle doesn't work immediately. After every cycle, there is a delay in the process where all the MOSFETs are turned off for some time. Why? We'll see that while checking the working of this converter. Full bridge converter is a type of buck converter and the relation between input and output voltage is given by this formula. Where D is the duty cycle, NP is the number of primary turns wound around the primary side of the transformer and NS is the number of secondary turns wound around the secondary side of the transformer. Initially, pulse width modulation is given to the gate of the MOSFET Q1 and Q4. Let's consider these all are N-channel MOSFETs. When the gate pulse is high, these MOSFETs turn on. This gate triggering voltage is not provided to the MOSFETs Q2 and Q3, so they are off in this cycle. The current tries to flow through the MOSFET Q1, primary side of the transformer, and MOSFET Q4. The current will start flowing through the dotted side of the primary winding. As both MOSFETs are on, the primary of the transformer is directly connected to the input. So the voltage across this will be equal to the input voltage. As both MOSFETs are on, the voltage across both MOSFETs Q1 and Q4 is zero. Now if we check the circuit diagram, the MOSFET Q2 and Q3 are directly connected to the input supply. So the voltage across Q2 and Q3 is equal to the input voltage. The primary side of the transformer is nothing but an inductor. Initially, it opposes the change in current. So the current across primary side increases linearly up to the maximum value. Well, due to electromagnetic induction, the voltage induces on the secondary side of the transformer. So the diode D1 gets forward biased and current starts flowing through it. Even if the voltage is induced on this secondary side, it is flowing in the opposite direction. So the diode D2 is reverse biased. So there is no current flowing through this diode. Well, the energy from secondary side is provided to charge the inductor. So the current flows to this inductor as well. This inductor and capacitor connected at the input filter out the ripple present in the circuit and provide constant regulated output to the load. Now we can turn on the MOSFET Q2 and Q3 immediately. 
But as we already know, the transformers are nothing but inductors. When they are connected to a power source, they store the energy and this energy has to be released after each cycle or else transformer will get saturated. Uh, what happens if a transformer saturates? Well, it suddenly acts as a very low resistance component which creates the short circuit. Hence, to avoid that, the transformer has to reset after each cycle. So all these MOSFETs are turned off for some time. Now the input is cut off from the transformer. The voltage across the primary falls to zero immediately. As the MOSFETs are off, they share the equal amount of input voltage. So the voltage across each MOSFET is half of input voltage. And there is no current flowing through the primary side of the transformer. Now the flow of current is interrupted suddenly in the secondary side. So the inductor induces flyback voltage which has a magnitude of V is equal to L dI by dt. Where L is the inductance of the inductor and dI by dt is the change in current with respect to time. Due to this, the direction of current remains the same. This current flows to these diodes and both diodes D1 and D2 get forward biased. So the current flows through the center tap secondary winding. And this current flows such a way that it cancels out the magnetic flux present in the transformer core. In the primary side, the residual energy from this is fed back to the input through the body diode of these MOSFETs and resets the transformer. So this process prevents the saturation of the transformer. As the stored energy in the inductor flows to the secondary circuit, the current flows out of the inductor and this cycle doesn't affect the output and we get the regulated output to the load. Now in the second cycle, the MOSFET Q1 and Q4 are turned off and MOSFET Q2 and Q3 are turned on. Now if you see the circuit diagram, the dotted side of the primary is pulled down to the negative side of the supply and with the same principle, the voltage is developed across the primary of the transformer but the direction of the current is reversed. So the voltage across primary side goes up to minus input voltage. The voltage across MOSFET Q2 and Q3 is zero because both are on. The voltage across MOSFET Q1 and Q4 goes up to input voltage. The current flowing through the primary side of the transformer increases linearly in the negative direction. Now the voltage induces on the secondary side and the current starts flowing through this opposite direction. So the diode D2 gets forward biased. In the second cycle, the diode D1 gets reverse biased so there is no current flowing through this diode D1. The energy is provided to the inductor so the current flows to the inductor again. And this inductor and capacitor filter out the ripple and provide a constant regulated output to the load. Now MOSFET Q2, Q3, Q4 and Q1 are turned off for some time. So the voltage across the primary falls to zero immediately. As the MOSFETs are off, they share the input voltage equally. So the voltage across each MOSFET goes up to half of input voltage. The MOSFETs are off, so there is no current flowing in the primary side of the transformer. Now just like previous cycle, the current flows to these diodes due to the inductor. The current flows out of the inductor, so it decreases and we get the regulated output. So this cycle gets repeated every time during the operation. And that's how a full bridge converter works. So as you see, unlike forward converters, we didn't need any additional circuitry to reset the transformer because the delay in between switching of the MOSFET does our job pretty well. If you want to learn about the forward converter, you can check this card above. Also the link of the video is in description. The half bridge converter and full bridge converter are very identical to each other. But the full bridge converter can handle more power than the half bridge converter. So they can be used in applications such as charger of an electric vehicle. 
the full bridge converter can also be used in the bidirectional converter in renewable energy sources like windmills and water turbines. There are many advantages of a full bridge converter. We can use this full bridge converter up to tens of kilowatts. Because the maximum voltage stress on each MOSFET is up to input voltage only. So we get the leverage to increase the current or voltage flowing through this converter. Well, there are several disadvantages of this converter. In this, we need a high side driver to control these MOSFETs and synchronizing them with each other is a very tough task. Well, there are so many components in this design. Due to that, its cost and complexity increases very much. So that's all about the full bridge converter. I hope you understood something from this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and finally, thanks for watching.